This is Daddy Show. Step off. Hey, hey, what is up? Welcome to the program. Thank you for tuning in. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Clark, and you are listening to Tom Clark's Main Event. This is episode number 31 of the podcast, and if you are just joining us today for the very first time, we will bid you welcome. Thanks for stopping by. If you're coming back for a repeat visit, as always, we say thanks for coming back. And to everyone involved, we'll extend to you the customary laurel and a hearty handshake. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your support. Thanks for reading. And hey, thanks for just being you. This is the main event. I'm your host. My name is Tom Clark. I am a featured columnist for The Bleacher Report. I also contribute to SportsKeda.com, the highly esteemed Camel Clutch blog. And I also hang my hat at my own personal blog, which is tomclarkbr.wix.com slash blog. And, of course, we have the show. Um, this is, as I said before, number 31. 31 episodes after this one in the can. I'm pretty happy about that. Episode number 30 took place uh, not too long ago. It's pretty happy how that one turned out. If you haven't checked that out, please go give it a listen. I appreciate any time the show is downloaded. Um, as you can tell by the background noise here, this is another mobile podcast. I seem to be doing these things a lot lately. It's kind of what I do. It's kind of who I am. But you know what? It's all good. Um, sometimes I just get the urge to, to sit back and to record this stuff and get everything sort of um, just sort of kind of throw it out there to you, which is what I'm doing right now. I can't always be in the very lovely and spacious Boink Studios here in the great state of North Carolina. Sometimes I just, uh, you know, I, I just get the itch and I just got to start talking, yo, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, as I said before, I'm pretty much all over the place as a writer. It's something I love to do. been doing it for a long time. And uh, it occurs to me that I don't always give the proper introduction uh, here on the show as to who I am, where I come from, where you can find my stuff. I usually pitch all that to you at the very end, and I might do that again this time around. But I thought I'd just kind of change it up and just sort of hit you with all this stuff in the very beginning and, uh, you know, kind of get the name out there and, you know, just let you know who I am, where I'm coming from, all that good stuff, right? All right, all right, so... Now that we have dispensed with the pleasantries, we shall get down to business. The main event this time around, it's a Seth world after all. That took like virtually all day for me to think of that title. <laughs> it didn't really. Um, I, I just wanted to get Seth's name in there. I wanted to incorporate it somehow and I wanted to make it cool and... And, uh, you know, if you're a wrestling fan, uh, you know uh, who Seth is. There's no other Seth. Kind of like, you know, if you're an NBA fan, there's only one Michael. There might be more than one, but for all you know and for all the world knows, there's only one Michael. When people say the name Michael, they know who you're talking about. It's not Michael Irvin. You know what I'm saying? It's Michael Jordan, baby. So if you're, a, if you're a WWE fan, if you're a pro wrestling fan, there's just one Seth. And that, of course, is the WWE World's Heavyweight Champion, Seth Rollins who has been the champ since WrestleMania 31. He's been tearing it up. In my opinion, he's the best hand in the company. Uh, isn't it nice that the best hand in the company is also the champion, by the way? Just a side note. Isn't it cool when that happens? I miss the days when the best talent in the locker room was the guy that had the championship. You know, once upon a time, back in the territory days of the business, man, that's all you saw, you know? Rick Flair, Dusty Rhodes. I mean, the the best guy, uh, you know, the best guys in the business, uh, the best guy in the locker room was the guy with the title because your best talent, your best talker, your top draw, the guy that could get fans to the arena, 
the guy that could talk a streak, uh, could sell tickets to a to an event. That's your number one guy. Now, uh, there is, as always, uh, there's a fine distinction, a fine line between being the top guy in WWE and being the championship uh, uh, title holder. It doesn't always go hand in hand because, as we know, as you know, as we all know, John Cena is still the big cheese, the big kahuna, the top dog, number one guy, head honcho, king of the hill, king of the mountain. How much time you got? I got a million of them. But he's still the top guy, right? And we've been we've been talking about that for a long time, and some people been, have some people have been just you know lamenting that fact for a very long time. Let's be honest. It is what it is, but could you say that Seth is the top guy? You can't say that. They're saying that for storyline purposes, but that's storyline purposes only. We know who's really you know, at the head of the ship. Uh, he's the guy that fans are either paying to, to come see or, and hate or paying to come see and, uh, and love. I mean, just that's it. That's your boy John Cena, right? But to me, in my estimation, the best hand in the company right now um, is Seth Rollins. Uh, he's, he's the best hand they have. And um, he's getting it done, man. I keep, you know, I I tend to keep reading uh, uh, opinions and and thoughts from other guys out there, and God bless them. Um, I, it's very rarely you you will ever hear me sit here and criticize uh, anyone. I don't criticize anyone by name. Um, if you've ever listened to the main event, you know that I don't do that. That's not my bag. Um, I don't. I don't like to do that, man. Because honestly, uh, uh, we could all have stones thrown at each other. We've all we've all had our fair share of opinions that have not come to pass, or that have been proven wrong, or facts maybe been proven wrong at some point, or you know, we might jump the gun and write a, a column about something just kind of as a knee jerk reaction. Within two weeks, it comes out that's not the case, and you know, we kind of jump the gun a little bit. I mean, we've all we've all had moments in our writing careers uh, as writers that. You know, maybe we'd like to take back a little bit and say, well, maybe I just I went a little too fast on that one. So I'm not going to sit here and criticize anyone. Your opinion is your opinion, whether you're a writer or not. Maybe you're just a fan and you're just having debates with me or whoever else, your friends or whatever. I'm not going to sit here and criticize anyone by name. Are there some hacks online? Oh, you betcha. There's bunches of them, man. They're everywhere. Uh, and, and those people, I don't really have a whole lot of great things to say about uh, I know their names. Ah, they may not know I know, but I do. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you who they are. Again, it's not my thing. But there's a lot of opinions out there, a lot of negativity towards Seth. Well, Seth's not the best champion I've ever seen. He runs from a fight. He's a coward. Okay, so if you listen to this show religiously, then you know that uh, one of my previous episodes was Heal Psychology. Okay, it was based on a column I wrote on Bleacher. Uh, he'll, I think it was um, Heel 101 or something like that. See how unfamiliar I am with my own product? Isn't that something? That's very telling, isn't it? I'm not even educated on my own product. That's sad. I, can, I know everything else, but I can't tell you what I've done on my own show. Man, isn't that something? <laughs> but uh, um, if you know that episode, if you've read that column, if you've heard me talk, if, you, if you're a friend or just an acquaintance or whatever you are to me, you know how I feel about heels. Heels make the world go around. Okay? A heel, at his core, is a coward. A heel will always run from a fight. And there are very few exceptions to this rule. Uh, the, the exceptions that jump in my, to mind immediately, Abdul the Butcher, the Road Warriors, Brock Lesnar, um, the Undertaker. There's very few heels um, that, that do not run from a fight. And those guys that don't, well, there's, they make excuses. They will cheat. They will jump you when your back's turned. A heel is supposed to be devious. A heel is supposed to take every advantage that they can absolutely take, that they can absolutely find, in order to win, in order to come out on top, in order to become or to remain the man. That's the whole point of being a heel. A heel is someone who cheats. That's what he does. And a lot of people are getting really upset over Seth being that guy. Seth is the man, okay? Absolutely. He is doing a fine job. And I guess I understand if you really want to get anal about it. I suppose I understand to a certain extent why people get upset about the fact that Seth uh, is a coward and runs and makes excuses. But at the same time, I don't understand a word because, again, he's a heel. 
and heels at their very core want nothing to do with a straight up fight. They're not interested in justice. They're not interested in evening the odds. They're not interested in facing off man to man at high noon. A heel will show up uh, at 12.05 and shoot you in the back when, he's, when the other guy's looking for him. See what I'm saying? That's what a heel does. A heel will take every unfair advantage to, at his disposal in order to win the match. That's what he's supposed to do. So, so Seth Rollins is the 2015 equivalent of Chris Jericho as the first undisputed WWE champion. So what? Who cares? Okay. I would say I would submit to you actually that WWE has shown more of a commitment to Seth in this role than they ever did to Jericho during his first uh, during his undisputed championship run in my opinion because Seth doesn't look weak not to me whoever said by the way do you think the Seth looks weak let's just throw the question out there and have you guys debate amongst yourselves and let's talk about it later here on the program or or whatever you want to do is Seth Rollins weak does he look like a weak champion to you right now because he doesn't to me to me Seth Rollins Looks as good as he ever has, if not better. I think he's grown into this role. I think he fills the spot quite nicely. I think they have him come out, and and he talks, and he talks, and he talks. And he's catching some heat for that, but it's okay. It's WWE. When you tune into Monday Night Raw, you don't expect to see a wrestling match to start the show because that's not how they roll. That's not what WWE does, man. They never have. Well, I shouldn't say they never have, but they don't for a long time, man. The first thing you see on WWE usually is either Triple H or Stephanie or both and Seth Rollins or Seth Rollins kicking off the program. That's what they do at WWE. It's what Raw is, man. They kick off the program program that way, dude. That's who they are. It's what they do. Now, you can sit back and hate that. A lot of us hate that, I'll be honest with you. I'd rather start off with a pro wrestling match, but that's just me. Call me silly. It's a wrestling show. It's what I want to see. But, you know, does that mean Seth can't talk? Absolutely not. Seth kills it. He's, he's gotten so much better. In my opinion, Seth couldn't talk for much at all in the beginning. That's just how I look at it. Dean had it. Roman couldn't speak a, th- couldn't speak a word. And Seth wasn't bad. Seth has improved by leaps and bounds. Dean is still Dean. Dean can still cut it and, and kill it every time. And Roman has improved quite a bit himself. But Seth is a guy that's the breakout star because he is WWE World Heavyweight Champion. He sits at the right hand of Triple H. He's the man, and he's got all the gold. He is now the United States Heavyweight Champion also, thanks to beating John Cena at SummerSlam. And, you know, he's got two straps, got you know, the, the main belt, and, and certainly a contender, or at least at one time a contender for the championship. But Seth, to me, is doing everything right. I don't see anything that Seth is doing wrong as a character or in the ring or as a guy himself. I mean, I think he's doing a fine job. But a lot of people out there are really ditching on him and, and, and just all this negativity to throw around because, again, they, they believe he is a weak heel that it's cheap heat, that he, you know, he, he runs from a fight and this, that, and the other. And I have to gently remind these very delusional people, Seth Rollins is a heel, and heels at their core are cowards, in, in as much as they will take every unfair advantage they can take instead of trying to win a straight-up fight, okay? And again, very few exceptions to that rule. But Seth, to me, in my estimation, is doing a bang-up job now. Um, in terms of, again, we talked about Breakout Star from the original Shield. Um, everyone thought it was going to be Roman, okay? Because of the build to WrestleMania 30. Thank you very much. You were paying attention. Roman Reigns was supposed to have been the next top guy, the heir apparent to John Cena, as it were. Boy, that didn't work out too good, did it? No, sir, it didn't. As we can all see, Seth Rollins turns out he was the next guy, all right? It's him. Now, Seth Rollins, in my opinion, could Seth be the top guy if Cena were not there? Interesting question. I don't think so. That's just my opinion. Take it or leave it, man. Take it for what it's worth. What I'm saying is that Seth Rollins is a top heel in WWE, no doubt about it. And I think he could always be the top heel as long as he is heel. He's that good. He's that good at generating heat. He's that good at getting over. He's a fantastic antagonist. That's who he is. He's born to be a heel. He was a fun ride in the shield when the three guys turned face, but man, he, he's so he's so so much better as a heel. Outstanding work done by Seth Rollins, man. I'm a big fan of his work in the ring out on the mic. 
and he's absolutely killing it. But he is the breakout star from the Shield, man. Uh, Roman, uh, we all thought was going to do something. He might still do something. You got Dean, who can do something all day long with his eyes closed. And I hope they do uh, follow through with Dean Ambrose. I mean, he's getting some attention right now next to Roman. They've been tagging up. And by the way, it's time to put the belts on Dean and Roman. Just so you know, I'm sick of it. Put the belts on them. I love me some New Day, but Dean and Roman need the belts. And I think that would be a fun little feud right there because Roman can be fun. Uh, Dean, is, Dean can be hilarious. And paired up against the New Day, that would be some good stuff. So when this Wyatt family thing is over, provided that Dean does a turn on Roman, as, as, as I predicted a couple of months ago, that I still believe will happen, okay? Provided none of that happens and the WWE keeps these two guys together, they should go for the tag team gold and they should win the belt straight up. That should be how it goes, in my estimation. I'm just saying it. It's just something that needs to happen. They're so good as a tag team. And you can tell they've been working. They've been working on the double team and tag team moves and all this. And, and they look really good. So why not keep them together? By the way, Dean coming out to, to, with Roman to the Shields music on Monday Night Raw. Wasn't that something? Did everyone catch that? That was a fun day, right? I, I like that moment, actually. That was a pretty cool thing to have happen. I enjoyed that immensely, actually. Um, and if you're taking notes, that was on the September 7th edition of the Monday Night Raw. And, uh, again, it was a fun time, and, and, and I enjoyed seeing that. I don't know if it's going to continue to happen. But I think it's just a way of WWE saying, hey, here's a little mini reunion for you. Here's the music with Dean coming out through the crowd. And, and also on top of that, it, it's it's sort of another uh, example of the union between Dean and, and Roman that um, Dean has his back, that they're working together, they're cooperating, and they're, they're more like a brotherhood than they ever have been possibly with Seth in the mix. But Seth Rollins is the breakout star of the three. There's no doubt about it. Again, he's Triple H's right-handed man. Uh, right-handed man, and everything's going smoothly for him. Um, I think that you could call 2015 Seth Rollins' year, in my opinion. Um, the biggest night of his career, aside from WrestleMania 31, is coming up on September 20th at Night of Champions, because that's the night that Seth Rollins faces not one, but two legendary stars in John Cena and the man called Sting. This is going to be a tremendous night for him. This is going to be, in my opinion, this is the high point for Seth Rollins this year. And and if you think he doesn't take this stuff seriously, you are out of your mind. Of course he does. Of course he's very grateful for the opportunities he's been given. He also knows that he's worked hard to get where he's at right now. He should be proud of himself. If you're a pro wrestling fan, you should be proud of him because he came up the way a lot of guys came up. He came up the hard way. He came up in the independent circuit, you know, uh, uh, probably working more matches than he cared to remember just for gas money to get back home. And, you know, that that's who Seth is. That's what he is when he, what it was when he came up. It's what he is now. And Seth Rollins sort of brought that mentality with him, just like Daniel Bryan did, that, that blue-collar mentality. You know what I mean? I'm the everyman. But Seth gave it a very harsh twist by turning heel and, you know, by being that, that sniveling, conniving, cheating, backstabbing scoundrel that he plays so well. No one does the facial expressions as well as Seth does when he's upset or he's surprised. And he's doing, a, he's doing a fine job of it. I'm buying in, aren't you? Speaking of his catchphrase and his cliche, I, mean, I, could, I don't know if you can call it cliche, but speaking of his catchphrase, yes, I'm buying what Seth Rollins has to offer. That's some good stuff, man. Straight up. I enjoy watching this stuff. I can't believe other people are criticizing. I'm not going to get back on that again. It just frustrates me a little bit, man, because I see how good the guy is, what the good he's done since he's been there, and all the great stuff that he's capable of doing in the future. And the future for Seth Rollins is extremely bright because, again, the biggest night of this man's career, aside from WrestleMania 31 when he won the championship, is going to come when he faces first John Cena, second Sting. Just think about how big this is. I can't sell this to you enough. Sting, NWA, WCW, World's Heavyweight Champion, the face of a company, all right? The revolving door in WCW swung pretty hard at times, but Sting was the one constant. Like Taker was in WWE, like the Von Erich family was in World Class, like the Ganyas were in the AWA, Dude, I'm telling you right now, he, the constant, the constant, absolutely, Sting, the face of, he really did become the face of NWA toward the end, 
when Crockett sold out. He was the face of WCW. Legendary pro wrestler, known throughout the world, respected by fans and his peers alike. I, I challenge you to do this. When is the last time you read negative press on Steam? I challenge you to find it. I'm sure there might be something somewhere that exists that he didn't feel like signing an autograph or he might have gotten into a, an argument with someone. But I don't know that I've read anything like that. Sting, to me, is one of those guys that just doesn't politic. If he does, he's done a tremendous job of, of disguising it and keeping it from everyone. Because I've never read anything negative about the guy, especially about him politicking. I just don't read anything like that. When your name is Sting, you don't have to politic, man. It's not necessary, you know what I mean? It's, just not, it's not necessary at all. You're Sting. You're legendary. You're the icon. The icon's a cute little nickname. It's not just a cute little nickname, man. Sting is the man, period. And has he lost a little hair? Yes, he has. Has he lost a move in the ring? You could argue that perhaps he slowed down a little bit. But I'll tell you this right now. He outworked some of the younger guys in that locker room. So come September 20th, you can pretty well believe it's going to be a curtain sellout backstage as these boys line up in front of the monitors, behind the curtain, wherever they can get a shot, get within eye shot, to watch Sting versus Seth Rollins. Because Sting and Seth Rollins are going to put on a clinic, man. John and Seth will do very well because they always do, but I'm not really looking forward to that one as much as I am. Sting versus Seth. This one is the great unknown, the match that no one knows how it's going to play out, what's going to happen in the end, or how it's going to look as it's going down, because Sting hasn't been there. With a guy like John, they've laid hands. He and Seth have laid hands on each other several times now. You know about what kind of match you're going to get. You know about what's in store. You know nothing about Seth versus Sting, and I like it that way. I don't like when something's predictable. I don't like when I've seen something a hundred times over, unless there's a good storyline behind it. I don't want to see it a hundred and one times, okay? What I like is new. I like fresh. I like different. I like compelling television. That's who I am as a fan. I don't necessarily want to see the same thing I've seen forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Do you? Do you know what I'm saying? That's not who I am, man. Not at all. I want to see something different. I want to see something new. I want to see two guys who get in the ring and they just go at it tooth and nail. I want to see two guys get in there and they just want to destroy each other. And yes, I also want to see a really good wrestling match. Is that too much to ask? All right. Maybe it's a bit harsh to say I want to see guys destroy each other. But I'm just thinking, you know what I'm doing right now? I'm thinking about Taker versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam, how excellent that match was. How hardcore it was in terms of its intensity and that both guys put all their emotion, their bodies. It was a very physical match, man. Now, you're not going to see that with Seth versus Stane. There's going to be a lot more grace to this one. Thanks to Seth's involvement. Seth is one of the best guys in the business right now. And he's the top hand in WWE. That's a big, powerful statement to make. I'm well aware of that, people. I am. But I'm telling you right now, it's 100% true. And you match up that willingness uh, to go out there and put your body on the line. You match that up with a guy who still feels like he has something to prove. Who works every day of his life to make that championship look good. That's not taking advantage of, of the spot he has and treats it like it's a free ride and that he deserves to be there. And by God, I should be champion. He's not doing that stuff. That guy right there, man, his heart is completely into it. And you match that up with Sting, who's the consummate professional who takes care of you in the ring. How many guys have been hurt wrestling Sting? Find me that list. I want to know if you can find it. I defy you to find it. But... This is going to be a, a good matchup. Could possibly be a great matchup. I'm hoping this match is five stars. I would not doubt it. And I'm going to tell you right now, Seth will not only not be tired from wrestling John, I think Seth's going to be in, in just great A shape, man. When later on during the night when he faces Sting, which which should be the main event, which should, well, it will be the main event, WWE World Heavyweight Championship on the line. I'm really looking forward to this, man. I've always been a Sting fan. For as long as I can remember because I respect Steam. Because I respect the fact that while his buddies were leaving and making money somewhere else, that he stayed behind. You know what I'm saying? That that he, he, he stayed the course. And we always talk about defections to and from. About guys that jumped from WWE and went to, went to WCW or whatever. But let's not forget that there was plenty of WCW guys that jumped ship and went to WWE and you couldn't blame them. WCW became a sinking ship after a while, but Sting stayed the course. Now, do you praise the captain for going down with the ship? Well, not necessarily, 
But the reason you give Sting respect, by the way, is because he stayed the course, because he believed in the product. He believed in that company. That when everyone else decided to leave, he stayed. He towed the line. He did the best he could with what he had. He did the best he could with terrible booking at times. They turned him heel. Remember that? The last thing in the world you want to see Sting do in the black and white is to be heel. That's lame. No one wants to see that. Sting, much like Ricky Steamboat, should never turn heel. Never. Forget about it. Get that stuff out of your head, man. Sting is a fantastic babyface. He's the biggest prota one of the biggest protagonists we've ever seen. I'm talking about in the history of the business. A great face, just top notch, man. Very good at what he does. Very good at getting the crowd behind. The fans love Sting. They still do. Here's an issue I have. Here's just the sidebar. Again, I th I know. There's not going to say I think. I know the match between he and Seth is going to be five star. At Night of Champions. I firmly believe that. Here's my issue. Which Seth Rollins are we getting? Excuse me. Excuse me. Which Sting are we getting? We know what Seth Rollins we're getting. We're getting the cocky, smarmy, overconfident, arrogant Seth Rollins. Who feels that he's entitled to have the championship. He's entitled to the best in life because he's a part of the authority. He needs to be protected. I'm smiling as I say this because I'm such a fan of Seth. Because I love his character, because I love everything he does. All right, I'm just telling you the truth, man. I love what I just I dig it all day long. All right, we know the Seth Rollins we're getting. What sting are we getting? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, in the most recent episode of Monday Night Raw, the backstage clips of Sting and Rollins statue, Oy vey, I'm starting to wonder, perhaps starting to worry. I didn't see the mysterious black and white vigilante. I saw the Sting doing his best impression of the Joker, a la Heath Ledger, back in TNA. That's what I saw. I got a couple of problems with that. One, that was the TNA incarnation of Sting, not WCW, and certainly not WWE. So I have a problem with it right there. Number two, I have a problem with it because it's just weird. And all due respect and kudos to Sting for trying to change up his his gimmick, change up his character to stay fresh, to stay entertaining, to not do the same shtick all the time. But folks, I'm going to tell you something right now. When you go to see an ACDC concert, you don't go to hear them sing a love song. You go to hear them sing the classics. You want to see ACDC do what they do best. You want to see Angus Young just tear into a guitar riff with a schoolboy outfit on and hopping across the stage. You don't want to see them singing Kumbaya. That's not who they are. You see what I'm saying? They will never be that band. You know what you're getting with ACDC. You know what you're getting with Sting in the black and white. I don't want him to act like Heath Ledger from Batman. I don't want that, dude. I don't want him to become somebody different. I want the black and white Sting. The icon, the vigilante, the, you know, the shadow in the night, the guy with getting vengeance with the baseball bat, swinging down from the Raptors, wearing the, the long black duster. That's what I want. The hair in the eyes. I want the whole nine. That's the classic I want. That's the ACDC I want to hear. That's the sting I want to see, man. You see what I'm saying? I don't know if I care too awful much with them flirting with the Joker character that he did in TNA. And to me, in my estimation, I can't believe no one WWE Creative didn't see that. First of all, did they sign off on him acting that way? I'm just asking the question, man. Whether they did or not, it's, I mean, I'm just asking. But it seems to me on some level, somebody should have hit him with, dude, weren't you doing that in TNA, by the way? Oh, yeah, I was. I thought I'd, you know, try here. The answer to that question is no. Now, you certainly don't want to upset a legend. You don't want to, you know, squabble over something minor as the pitch of your voice or how you act during a promo. That seems to be pretty minor to me. He can cut a great promo. He can. I mean, he's very, very good at it. He's still very, very good at it. There's nothing being lost there at all in Sting cutting a promo. I'm not suggesting that. What I am suggesting is that this thing he's doing where he's just sort of playing with the camera, that kind of thing, dude, that's just, that's not him, in my opinion. It looks like Sting trying to become that character. It doesn't look like Sting. There's a big difference. Now, you can call it bias. 
You can say that I saw him, that all I know is the black and white. But slow your roll for a second there, son, because I and I knew the neon sting. That's the sting I came up watching was the neon sting with spike blonde hair. And the moment he went to the black and white, I took one look at that dude in the, in the duster and the, wearing all the black from head to toe, and I said, man, I'm liking this. This is something I could watch all day long. This is some good stuff here because it felt natural. While it was a shot to the system, to see him change it up that way, for, and it stayed that way for a long time, by the way, just being surprised, not what no one was going to do next, and not speaking a word for practically a year. While that was fun and entertaining, it was still very different, but it got over really, really quick because it was cool. Do you know what I mean? It was very, very cool. And and that's what he became, uh, and that's what he was, and I love that. And I, to me, you don't change that. So I hope that what we saw... With him and the statue, which I was okay with the statue bit, by the way, where he tossed it in the back of the truck, and the truck trash truck uh, crushed it. I'm okay with that part. That part was fine. But Sting acting, the fans were laughing at him. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's okay if they laugh with him. They weren't. They were laughing at him. I have a fear that if he continues to push that the um, push the envelope on that side of his character, the one from TNA, this thing could backfire on him quick. And it all goes back to the opinion that Sting had for the longest time. The reason that he would not come into WWE, he was scared of how the company would treat his character. Remember that? He had a legit, legitimate concern because of what they'd done with Booker T. When The Rock stared at Booker T and said, Who in the blue hell are you? Wow, are you serious? I mean, dude, that was... that was. I remember when that happened. I didn't need to read a dirt sheet the next day to tell me there was some friction that came from that. I didn't need to read a dirt sheet or talk to my friends or have anyone say to me, dude, that's not right. I knew it wasn't right. I could sense that. Now, did Booker know the line was coming? I've never had clarification on that. I'm not sure if he did or not. Does it make a difference? At the end of the day, he still disrespected Booker T. Now, I know The, the Rock has no respect for anyone and all that other stuff. Uh, and I get that. But still, at the same time, you got to wonder who knew about it and why did it happen that way to begin with. Is that something? But that's what that's kind of what that's kind of what I'm talking about here with Sting, man. He had a lot of reservations about coming in because of that very moment right there with Rock and Booker T, and, and some other stuff about Goldberg. He wasn't happy with the way he was treating WWE, so he had some real concerns, legitimate concerns about how his character would be treated. Are we starting to see that now? Are they encouraging him to do this? And he's having fun, so why not? But six months from now, he's gonna look back on it and say, "Man, I wish I hadn't acted that way." I'm not trying to blow this thing out of proportion. I'm not trying to make more of what it is. I'm just giving you my take. And my take, it really felt like the sting from TNA. I hope I'm wrong about this. I hope they stop it. Cut it out. I don't want to see it, okay? But, all right, sidebar. That that was just, I got off on a rant there. My apologies. I, I often do that. If you never heard the show before, you know now. But the match itself, itself to me, I think it's going to be five stars. I'd be shocked if it were not. Because both guys definitely have it in them to still do that. Sting still has it in him. Seth has it in him for years to come, in my opinion. I think they're going to put on a great match. I think it's going to steal the show, actually. I firmly believe that. I think this match is going to steal the show. I think it's going to be the one we're talking about for days, weeks, months to come. I really believe, I, I truly believe that. Now, why, why, you ask? Well, thanks for asking, I'll tell you. Because Sting, as I said before, he's the consummate professional. He wants this to look good. Sting is not there for Sting. Sting's there to have fun. Sting's there for a little bit of money. But Sting wants to end his career on a high note. He doesn't, no one wants to end their career with TNA. If Kurt Angle's saying that to anyone, he's lying. No one wants to end their career in TNA. All due respect to the boys in the TNA locker room. I got nothing but respect for them. I hate their upper management. Their upper management's terrible. The decision makers over TNA... Uh, oy vey on that one but I'm good with the boys in the locker room and the girls, I'm totally good with them and no disrespect intended to them but that's not where you want to finish your career you want to finish your career in WWE on the worldwide stage with the McMahon family watching from behind the curtain that, that's how you want to end your career with the whole world giving you a handshake and slapping the gold watch on your wrist and saying dude uh, we appreciate you, thank you for everything you did for us, thank you for making us feel awesome Thank you for making our day, man. You you are the best. Thank you for your hard work, for the blood, sweat, and tears. We'll always love you. That's sort of where all that comes from right there. 
And that's the way you want to end your career. You want to end your career like that. I mean, if if anyone wants to, if anyone tells you anything different, they're lying. I'm sorry. Again, no disrespect intended. But Sting wants to end his career in WWE, and he's doing the right thing by what he's doing right now. He wants to have fun and, and all that stuff, make a little bit of money in his career the right way. But, dude, also, he's going to help Seth. Now, here's the problem that a lot of people are having right now, actually, with this particular match. Who do you put over? Oh, my goodness, what a great question. What? Who do you put over in this match? Excellent, right? Oh, man, I have no idea. <laughs> if I'm calling the shots, I would say that this match breaks down. That's my opinion. That Seth goes to cheat, he goes to do something, the referee catches him and disqualifies him, and Sting wins by disqualification. I say you need to leave some loose ends here. I don't think this should be a one-and-done title match. I think that Sting should continue to have friction with Seth. I don't think one match is going to get it done. I'm not suggesting they go two or three, but I think maybe if you just want to have the one match, that's fine, and then leave the storyline sort of just dangling there for a bit and then come back to revisit at a later date, that's fine. But you can have Seth escape just narrowly by the skin of his teeth, as he so often does, with both title belts. I'm good with that too, honestly. But do you give Sting the championship? Well, glad you asked me that one because recently on Sports Key, I published five reasons Sting will not win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. I got some flack for that one. It's totally fine. Uh, it was nothing personal against Sting. I just I had five great reasons why he shouldn't win the belt. I'm not going to tell you what they are. Go read the column. Help the brother out, man. Give me that click. I need the click. Do you understand? I crave the click of your mouse. Help a brother out, all right? <laughs> but... Uh, I, again, I think this match is going to be, because I think it's going to be a great match, and I think that, that Sting is giving back. I think Sting is giving back, and Seth's going to be more than willing to accept, and Seth's going to, he's going to sell like crazy for Sting, make Sting look even better than he already looks right now, and I think Sting will sell for Seth, and I think it's going to be a tremendous match. This, to me... Strip away the paint and the black and all that stuff. And strip away Seth's cocky attitude and his flamboyance you know, on the mic and all that. And his bragging all the time. Take that all, both those things away from both guys. And you just have two really good wrestlers. You know what I'm saying? Who know how to tell a story in the ring. They're both really good at that. I think Seth is still evolving as a storyteller. He's not done by any stretch. But Sting is so good at what he does. So good at telling a story. I think these two guys hook up and they... They they just mesh together on so many levels. They're they're just the perfect opponents for each other, uh, and and again because well they're just two really solid professional wrestlers, and to me that makes all the difference in the world. But, but you know versus one really good wrestler and one guy that has kind of having to be carried through the whole match. There's that what's the fun in that? There's no fun in that, dude. So, again, I think this is going to be top-notch. I'm really looking forward to this match. And again, you know as I said before, Sting doing a lot for Seth. And Seth going to acquiesce uh, and return the favor. Now, as it pertains to Seth, uh, there's been a lot of controversy um, surrounding him. Not just the stuff about, you know, is, is he a viable champion? Is he too much of a coward? Pfft, whatever, all that nonsense. That's just background noise to me at this point, man, I'll be honest with you. But um, uh, a lot of controversy because of his girlfriend that was down at NXT. Uh, and she was fired recently. There has been the naked pictures that surfaced online, all this, that, and the other. Stay, excuse me, Seth Rollins is not uh, an angel. He never proclaimed to be, but man, has he got some stuff in his past now, dude. He's got some stuff that people can always go and look up. He's always going to have it there. He's got a wacky racist girlfriend, supposedly, and he's he's been naked on camera. So there you are, but... Uh, Oh, man, what what a time for Seth, man. I mean, just all that stuff. And as I said, controversy, yes, of course. But Seth is on top of the world right now, man. Seth is on top of the pro wrestling world. You can't get any higher than Seth Rollins is right now, unless your name is John Cena. Seth is number two in that company. When Brock Lesnar is there... Seth is perhaps a very strong number two, partially three, just because of who Brock is and what he brings to the table and the kind of house that he can draw on any given night and the kind of ratings he can bring also to TV. But Seth is the man, in my opinion, again. And, and he's just, he's so good at what he does and he's so entertaining and everything he does is just spot on. And 
he's again, folks, he's on top of the world, all right? While there's a whole locker room full of guys waiting to get their chance, Seth Rollins is on top of the world. And, I mean, did he earn his spot? I believe he did. I think he fought to get to where he is. You know, he endured the indie circuit. I, I say endure like it's a punishment or something. You got to come up and you got to earn. How, you got to earn your stripes. You got to learn how to work. You got to get in there and wrestle as many guys as possible. The only way you get better is by wrestling people better than you. But at this point, you know, how many how many times can Seth say he's wrestled somebody better than himself? Well, guess what? He's going to find out at Night of Champions when he works Sting. This is going to be Seth Rollins' night. Keep your eyes open, folks. i got a column coming up for Sports Key in the next few days. Uh, proclaiming uh, uh, Seth's uh, uh, drive and talking about his, um, uh, his work ethic and everything goes along with it. And I've also got some stuff coming up on Bleacher, uh, probably in the next couple of days or so, that he will own the night at Night of Champions. He will own it. No doubt about it. Thanks to his two performances, which are going to be front page. That's marquee matchups, dude. Seth Rollins versus John Cena, United States Championship. Seth Rollins versus Sting, WWE World Heavyweight Championship. If you can't get pumped for those matches, there's something wrong with you, man. Turn this off. Well, don't turn off till I'm done, because you might miss something fun and cool, and you don't want to do that, all right? But uh, if you don't believe that this match is, that he, that he's going to own the night and have two great matches, dude, what are you watching? What do you know? Even know what you're talking about right now? Seriously, just calm. Just calm down. Calm down, would you? Seth's gonna own it, man. Not a champions is gonna belong to Seth Rollins, 110 percent. And if I'm so looking forward to this pay per view, I can't wait to see it on the network. It's gonna be five star. I'm telling you, I believe it is. I don't know about the whole show, but Seth Rollins part of it. You better believe it, man. Absolutely, he is going to be the talk of of fans all over the world. The day after, and and again, talk about the confidence that WWE has in this guy. Think about it. Not only did they give him the top championship, they made him sort of the lead star on TV. He's in heavy rotation all the time. He's the guy. He's the featured attraction. Okay, I put him right next to Triple H, second only to John Cena in terms of uh, you know, the pecking order, I guess you could say. Uh, and, and uh, again, when Brock comes there or comes back or whatever, it's a little bit different, but all the confidence and all the faith they have in Seth and everything that they've done uh, for him, all the opportunities he's been given, everything he's doing right now. And on top of that, you get to work John and Sting in the same night. This guy is on cloud nine. Absolutely. No doubt about it. He's working one of the best the game has ever seen. And he's working the top guy in WWE. The war, he's working the faces of two of, of two different pro wrestling companies. Okay? WCW came with an eyelash of putting WWE out of business. Go and chew on that for a while, man. We always want to talk about their downfall and things they did wrong. And, man, there was a whole bunch of stuff then, wasn't there? It was pretty terrible. But let's don't forget how close they came to putting Vincent Mann out of business. And Sting was at the forefront of that. He was the face of that company. It didn't mean Sting held held any ill will toward anyone. He didn't. He wasn't the guy out there saying, "Oh, we got to take him down. Oh, we got to beat him." That was Bischoff. Get it straight, okay? But Sting was the face of WCW, a legend. He's a living legend. One of the very few guys from that era that can get in the ring and still go. I mean, Sting came up in the eighties, eighties, late eighties, early nineties, right? Late eighties, early nineties. I remember. In Mid South, which became UWF, I remember the Blade Runners, right? Who was the Blade Runners? Who were the Blade Runners? I should say, Sting, the Ultimate Warrior, right? By the way, did you catch the fact that uh, um, uh, on the in, in the authorities' office on the, the 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 last Monday Night Raw, that on the wall you had a Warriors picture next to Sting's? How cool was that? I always thought it was a shame that two guys couldn't be seen on TV after they brought Sting in, like before Warrior passed away. I thought that would have been cool if that could have happened. Uh, it's a shame they didn't. They couldn't appear in paint together, at least for a photo op. You know what I mean? That would have been nice. If there's some pictures out there floating around from their days in WCW, I need to look that up, by the way, because they were in WCW together, together at the time. Uh, so that would have been cool to see. I do, if, I'm, if I recall correctly, I do remember a tag match or two they had on Nitro. Where they were tagging together. Uh, that, that You know what? That's something good to go look up on the network. By the way, if you don't have WWE Network, are you out of your mind? 
Isn't this show fun? All I do is talk about wrestling and make fun of you. I insult you. What a jerk. <laughs> Please don't think I'm a jerk. I really am a nice guy. I got a bad rep. Not with everyone, just some people. It's okay. It's all right. You know me. You love me. I have a great audience, man. I get some good feedback. My numbers are pretty good. I'm happy, I'm happy with them so far. I got to thank everybody for that. And you know what? I, I'm just I'm, I'm happy to be a fan. I really am because it's a fun time. I, people talk to me about ratings and money and all that. Eh, whatever. I like the product. Uh, could it be better? Well, yeah, it could be, but a lot of things could be better. So you just take it, take it or leave it, man. Just take it for what it's worth and keep on trucking. And that's what I do as a pro wrestling fan. Always done, always will. But Seth is a highlight of that of that company right now. And again, he's on top of the world. He's got to love what he's doing. Uh, you know he does, uh, and and he's the best there is at it right now. He's the best in the game in that company, in my opinion, at this point. Uh, and it's just good times. It's a great time to be a fan. Guess what, folks? I'm taking it home. This was, uh, I haven't checked the time on this sucker, but usually my shows last about an hour, give or take. This may not be quite that long this time, but I just had a whole bunch of stuff to say about Seth. Just want to get it out there to you and, and get your feedback. By the way, what is your feedback? You want to talk? You want to spitball? You want to conversate? Hit me up. You can email me, TomClarkBR at Yahoo.com. I'm also on the Twitter. And there was a really loud engine that just flew by. That was not my car, by the way. My car sounds pathetic next to that one. But uh, you can find me on Twitter at TomClarkBR. The Tom Clark's main event has a Facebook page. Go click like on that sucker. If you do it enough times, you get a bag of cookies. Or I do, or something like that. I'm sure something, somebody's going to get something somewhere. I'm just, I'm sure of it at this point. Uh, but you can find me there. You can find me on Twitter. Uh, and, of course, again, I'm on Bleacher Report, Sports Kita, the esteemed, the highly esteemed Camel Clutch blog. Can't say Camel Clutch blog without saying the highly esteemed. Eric Argulo runs a fantastic blog. Please go check it out. It's good stuff. And, of course, on my own blog at tomclartbr.wix.com slash blog. That's it, folks. That's episode number 31 of the show. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Thanks for reading. And, hey, thanks for always being there, Doc. Please come back and join me again, and we'll see you next time on Tom Clark's Main Event.